Hi, I'm Greg from RV Haulers. We build these custom fifth wheel RV haulers designed to pull some of the largest fifth wheel recreational trailers on the market. And I get a question quite often. Customers are curious about how long a trailer can I pull safely? Now, we can certainly pull really long trailers. However, if you do your due diligence about uh, rules of the road, there are some states and some Canadian provinces that have some rules that state the overall rig length should be 65 feet or less. Now, if you were to pull the folks, the hundreds of folks that are towing trailers with these RV haulers, and you were to ask them what's their overall rig length, uh, the vast, vast majority are well over 65 feet, but it's a conscious decision that you need to make. Do I want to go beyond 65 feet? Some people don't. The vast majority have chosen to do so. When we have one of these big RV haulers, we want to pull a really big trailer. If you're considering full timing, all of your worldly possessions are going to be in that fifth wheel and stored in that RV hauler. Storage and space and elbow room even inside that fifth wheel become paramount. Now what I want to address today is can you pull, for instance with this specific RV hauler, could you pull a 38 foot trailer? And the answer simply is yes. And I'm going to demonstrate that today. Some of the other questions I'm going to address though is what are some of the design issues that we can do to shorten these rigs and still perhaps carry a smart car or a three-wheeler or a motorcycles? What are some of those design considerations? I'll try to answer those today as well. Now let me introduce you to what we've got today. This is the RV hauler that we've named Logan and he has been designed to carry a smart car or a three-wheeler up here on the bed. For my demonstration purposes, I've connected a Raptor fifth wheel. Now this fifth wheel, as I've illustrated, is exactly 40 feet long. I have some other customers that are wondering if we can pull a 38 foot trailer. So I've put that green tape line on there to show what a 38 foot trailer would look like. But first of all, let's take a look at our overall rig length. I'm gonna do some work with my other camera here. We'll get some things going to show you some base measurements to begin with. This RV hauler has a moose bumper installed on him. Now, a moose bumper is quite a bit deeper this way than a normal factory bumper. Actually, it is a normal factory bumper would end right there. This comes out an extra five to six inches, depending upon the model that you buy. Now, what I've done is I've tie wrapped on this the stick, so that is going to be my measuring point. So I'm going to hook my oops, tape measure on there, if I can, with one hand. So we'll get that hooked. We'll put some tension on it. And here we go. Let's pull this out. And I want to show what our overall lengths are. Now, some of you sharp folks are going to look at this and say, well, Greg, your tape measure is wowed. It's got that big bow in it. Well, if anything, I'm being more cautious than uh, is necessary. So I've still got, if you look out down there, you've still got kind of a big bow, but I've tightened it up a fair amount. If you look, a 38 foot trailer would be 65 feet, three inches long right now, the way it is, or as expected, 67 feet, three inches. So I have a 38 foot trailer, which comes to this green mark, would be with this RV hauler, 65 feet, three inches long. Now that's three inches longer than the folks on the highways want to see us. So what can we do? Well, there's a few things that we can do. One of the things that I've done on this specific RV hauler is I've been careful about my distances here on the rear bed. We have done some work to shorten this bed a little bit, but still to a safe degree. If you look between the smart car and the drum box, 
I have, if you were to put a tape measure on there, I've got four inches, so I haven't really pushed this smart car up as far as I have to. But gosh, I certainly have a lot of space from the nose of the fifth wheel to the back of the smart car. I should probably prove to you the length of this trailer as well. Now, just so we have some frame of reference, what I've done is I put a square on the front of the trailer. And if you look at the front of the trailer and you put a square and you go straight down, it comes to the back, the inside of this green tape. And if we follow it down, it actually ends up being right here. This is the front edge of the trailer. So just to show you the length of the trailer, let's hook my tape on there. And we'll pull this back to show you that the trailer is, there we go, 38 feet long to that green mark, 40 feet to there. So now that we have our base measurements established, what can I do? Right now, I'm three inches too long if I were a 38 foot trailer. Remember, if I were to remove the moose bumper, which is between five to six inches too long, or, or in long in depth, I'd already be a legal combination rig. But with this RV hauler, let's try to get it down to 65 feet with a 38 foot trailer. How we do that is we shorten this pin box. These pin boxes extend out quite a distance. And you can see we've got tons of room when we're towing straight in here to uh, allow us to do some work here. Now, this green line that I've drawn here, or this green line that I've taped on, is the pin center of the pin from the pin box. We call this box here a pin box. And if we look at the, the pin that comes down and goes into this hitch, the center of the pin is exactly centered on that silver bolt. So what we've started to see in the industry with our heavy duty trucks is that even trailer manufacturers like New Horizons and others are sending out their trailers with straight down pin boxes. If we look under here, what they've started to build is instead of a pin box that goes at an angle, they create a pin box that goes straight down. So effectively the pin would be right here on this trailer. They are building them straight down. Now I don't need to do that in this scenario. I only need to save three inches. So could I, here at RV Haulers, would we build you a pin box that is three inches shorter? Gosh, yes, not a problem. So can we realistically make it 65 feet with a 38 foot trailer? Yes, but what can I pull, Greg? If I did want the moose bumper, if I did want something longer than 38 feet, what can I pull and still be at 65 feet overall? Let's look at what this pin box really measures. If we measure from that, the center of that bolt to the mid point, see where those three sets of bolts are, the vertical bolts, if we measure down, if we made this pin box straight down, we would save 19 inches. So I'm not quite at 40 feet, but if I were to shorten that pin box, say a 16 inches, I could get us up to a 39 foot, 39 and a half foot trailer and still be at 65 feet. However, let me demonstrate for you some of the other issues that you have to be concerned with, with the trailer and when it turns. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this RV hauler and this trailer into a sharp turn. I'm gonna start to jackknife these two rigs. 
get my tape measure out of the way so I don't crunch it. Bear with me just a second. So let's start up Logan and let's put him through a, where I'm gonna turn the wheels as sharp as I can, the steer axle, and let's see, just in normal turning, turning as sharp as I can, what kind of clearance do I have between the smart car, the trailer, the tail of the trailer? I'm gonna move the camera because I know, I could guess here, we're probably going to be coming into a place like that. All right, I'll back up a little bit to give us some turning room. That's good. All right, I'm gonna turn the wheel. As I'm dry steering, I'm doing this on grass, so I, I know this is a little bit hard on the trailer tires. But because I'm on grass, I know I'm not scrubbing too, too much. So there we go, the wheels are turned as sharp as they'll go. I've been completing this turn for quite some time. Let's call it quits there. So, let's see what we have. Now imagine we have brought this trailer, in this case, three inches shorter, perhaps 16 inches shorter. In other words, we've shortened up that um, pin box and we've pulled the trailer forward. And in this jackknifed scenario, what kind of space do I have? If we look square to the smart car and we measure, you know, what would happen if this, I'll put this tape measure or this yardstick, if you will, straight against the side of the wall, I could be still 22 inches shorter and not, being com not come close to that mirror. Now how about, if you look at my clearances, gosh, you know, height-wise in here, you know, I've got 11, over 11 inches, lots of room for clearance between the pin box and the bed when we've turned. Now how about this space in here? I'll do my best to show you. So there's the, there it is touching and if you look at this corner, we've got 25 inches between that corner. So theoretically, would I be able to go to a 39 foot, six inch trailer, shorten that pin box 16 inches? Yes, I would have lots of room between the cone or the cap of the trailer in the smart car. I would have lots of room between here, the corner of the RV hauler and the underside of the trailer, certainly more than the three inches that I need for a 38 foot trailer. Let's go further. Let's take this RV hauler and jackknife it the full 90 degrees. Now what we're going to illustrate is actually some really interesting geometry. So let's get this turned 90 degrees. There we go. So looking from this angle along the edge of the trailer, I have, please trust me, that's about five inches of space between the trailer and the mirror. And what's interesting is, even though theoretically I've shortened this pin box, I've made the trailer go this way, that does not affect my jackknife space that's in here. All I've done is I've pushed this trailer in that direction 
by shortening the pin box, shortening the pin box under there. Um, do we still have lots of space under here? Oh yeah, I mean, well, and that doesn't matter all that much. This is a really extreme scenario. If we shorten the trailer from here to here, I've got, I'll go worst case, go at the top. So about 21 inches, maybe 20, 20 and a half. So again, do I have 16 inches of space? Yes, I do. Do I have three inches of space? Yes, I do. For our demonstration purposes today, I've been using a Volvo Model 730. This is the longest sleeper that Volvo makes. There is also a Volvo Model 780 that's very popular. It's that gold colored one that you see in the background. It is the same length from the front of the bumper to the back of the cab, but that Volvo Model 780 is taller. That Volvo in the background is 13 feet tall. Now there's some two other Volvo models that you can consider that give us even a shorter rig length. There's a Volvo Model 630 and a Model 670 that are approximately 15 inches shorter to the back of the cab than the ones that I've been showing you. So I was demonstrating today that certainly we can find 16 inches, 3, 10, 12, 16 inches in pin box and in other little bit of gymnastics shortening up our beds to allow us to tow a longer trailer. The other thing that you can consider is instead of a Volvo model 730 or 780 that you see in this screen, consider the Volvo 670 or 630. They are 15 inches shorter. So all of a sudden, we've been able to find almost three feet of additional trailer length that we can safely tow. I hope that's made sense for you folks. I'm Greg from RV Haulers. If you have any questions about these custom RV haulers, please contact us. Here's our website information on the screen. And I would love to build for you the custom RV hauler that either pulls your 38 your 39 and a half, or maybe your 45 footer. Thanks for watching.